This tutorial explains how to apply the summary function in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you several examples and the first example is based on the vector object that we can create with line two of the code. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the top right of our studio that a new vector object is appearing and we can print this vector to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line three of the code. And then you can see that our vector contains 10 values ranging from one to 10. Now let's assume that we want to calculate summary statistics for this vector object. Then we can apply the summary function as you can see in line five of the code. So if you run line five of the code, you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that some summary output for our vector object is returned. So as you can see, the summary function has returned the minimum value of our vector, which is equal to one, the first quantile, the median, the mean, the third quantile and the maximum value. So in this first example, I have explained how to apply the summary function to a vector object. However, it's also possible to apply the summary function to other data objects, such as data frames. And this is what I want to show you in the next example of this tutorial. So for this example, we first need to create an example data frame, as you can see in lines seven to nine of the code. So after running these lines of code, you can see at the top right of our studio that a new data frame object is appearing, which is called data. And if you click on this data frame object, a new window is opened, which is showing the structure of our data frame. And in this case, our data frame contains five rows and three columns, which are called X1, X2 and X3. So if we want to calculate summary statistics for a data frame, then we can apply the summary function as you can see in line 11. So once again, we simply need to specify the name of our data frame. So in this case, data within the summary function. So if you run line 11 of the code, you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that another summary output has been returned. And this time the summary function has returned summary statistics for each of the columns of our data frame. So once again, you can see the minimum first quantile, median, mean, third quantile and maximum value for the numeric columns in our data frame. So in this case for the columns X1 and X3. However, for the second column of the data frame, which is a character, you can see different summary statistics. So in this case, the length, the class and the mode. So in this second example, I have explained how to apply the summary function to a data frame object. However, it's also possible to apply the summary function to regression models. And this is what I will show you in the third example of this tutorial, starting in line 13 of the code. So in lines 13 to 15, I'm creating example data for this example. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the top right of our studio that two numeric vector objects appear at the top right, which are called my X and my Y. And both of these vectors contain 1000 randomly distributed numeric values. Now, if we want to estimate a linear regression model based on these vector objects, then we can apply the LM function, as you can see in line 17. So within the LM function, we need to specify our target variable. So in this case, my Y and our predictor variable. So in this case, my X. And then we need to store the output of this in a new model object, which we call mod. So if you run line 17 of the code, you can see that a new model object is appearing at the top right, which is called mod. And to this model object, we now can apply the summary function, as you can see in line 19 of the code. So after running line 19 of the code, you can see that a relatively large output is returned at the bottom in the RStudio console. And this output shows the descriptive statistics for our linear regression model, such as the intercept and the regression coefficients. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. 
In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.